It was in this remote environment that the Wartman family, Father Elmo, son Randy, and daughter Cindy and Gina, lived in the late 1970s. You had to be fairly mentally tough to do the day-to-day -day things we did and just to live on the coast and to survive on the coast and travel the coast the way we did. When she was just 12, Gina Wartman survived an extraordinary ordeal in the wilderness, one in which she relied as much on her mind as upon the skills she learned growing up in these wild and beautiful surroundings. Back in the 1950s, a psychologist called Kurt Richter carried out an experiment that illustrates the kind of beliefs that Gina Wartman, with a brother and sister, needed to survive. He put rats into a cage, which had just one opening that led into a long, narrowing tunnel. When the rats tried to get out, some of them just gave up, turned back, and stayed there, while others struggled all the way through to the end and freedom. Here you go. But the experiment had two parts. He next put the same rats into a tank of water and found an astonishing difference in the way the two groups behaved. The rats that had given up in the cage gave up again. They just sank to the bottom and drowned, while the ones that had struggled free before kept swimming until they were rescued. What the rats learned is that if you don't give up, you have a very good chance of survival. And that's exactly what the Wartman children had learned from their father. Want it again? Ready? Go! Elmo Wartman died in 1993, but when his children were growing up, he instilled them such resilience and faith in his leadership that they survived an ordeal which might have led others to give up and die. Excellent. We were hardy kids, and we were strong and capable and knew how to uh, take care of ourselves. And yet, my dad was the authority. It was just uh, driven home that uh, on the boat or in a dangerous situation, you listen to dad and you don't question what he's telling you to do because it could be the difference between life and death. Man, let's go. As the Wartman family left Prince Rupert one February afternoon, those beliefs were about to be tested to the limits and beyond. They were sailing to their home in Alaska, 120 miles away, across some of the most exposed and dangerous waters in the area. Their route would take them past the cabin at Rose Inlet, and I'm going to follow it as closely as I can, using Elmo's own account. They were aiming for Cordova Bay, here, and from there on up to Craig. The cabin is about here. But when they got to this point, a storm came up. As the winds hit 80 miles an hour, the Wartmans tried to ride them out. They thought they'd be blown out to sea, but they were actually being driven onto the shore. Yes! Yes, Come on, kids, we've got to get up the boat! Dad was deciding what was going with us and what wasn't going with us. In a sense, like it, he was completely in control of what was really a very out of control situation. Get over the side. Get up, we go now. The Whartmans were in deep trouble, shipwrecked on a remote and uninhabited Alaskan shoreline in the middle of winter. No one would know they were missing and no one would find them by chance. This is where they got out of the water. And of course, in their situation, the thing to do is to stop. That stands for S, stop, don't panic. T, think about your situation. O, orientate yourself. And most importantly, P, plan. And that's exactly what they did. My dad started taking control of the decision-making, and my brother, even at 15 years old, he is a hard worker and very focused. And so we all kind of fit back into our roles and started to look at the situation as a survival. 
situation instead of as a hopeless situation. They built a basic shelter where they would spend the first night ashore and scavenged for what little food they could find. Their first meal was a handful of mussels cooked on an open fire like that. But you need an awful lot of those if you're going to survive for any length of time. The problem with this beach is that there isn't very much food here. For most of the year, this is exposed to heavy surf, which means there are very few mussels to be found on the rocks. And it has a solid floor, so you can't even dig for clams. Added to that, the wind was simply howling in here, so there wasn't even any shelter. They could have just slumped into apathy, as many people have done in similar situations. But the Walkmans knew that if they were going to live, they had to get away from here. They would have to rely on a leaking dinghy, which would only support two people without sinking. It would need strengthening for the 20-mile journey to the hut. It just seemed very hard to understand how we were going to pull that off, but I've seen Dad pull off amazing things before. So at that point, again, I didn't see it, but I was looking to him to, to show me the way on exactly how we were going to do it. Those people who survive report an ability to break their survival down into separate tasks, smaller tasks, and to take it one step at a time. Survival's not a big task. Survival is a whole series of small tasks. From familiar landmarks, they'd figured out exactly where they were, which is this inlet just here. Now, their plan was to head to the nearest people at the hut in Rose Inlet, way up here. We'll see you in the next bay. First they had to move to a more sheltered bay to work on the dinghy. Eventually it would have to carry all four of them across two miles of open water. But for now they split up. Randy and Jean are going by sea, Cindy and Elmo making a treacherous hike through dense woodland and snow-filled gullies. I was like superwoman at that point. I could have hiked anything. I had to know that they were okay. It was just adrenaline, and um, I was beyond fear for my own safety. All I knew was I was going to, we were going to get up the beach to where they were. It was only a mile away, but it took Cindy and Elmo two whole days to reach Randy and Gina on the second beach. Back together again. They lashed driftwood to the dinghy to make it buoyant enough to carry them all. But even then, the two-mile crossing would be touch and go. Once they got to the other side of the straits, they'd follow the coastline along for the 20 miles to the cabin. What they didn't realize is it was going to be three weeks before they all got there. I don't think at any point I really felt like um, we're going to die out here. It never came up. We talked about what we were going to do when this miserable situation ends. And I think the longer we were out there, the more energy we put into thinking about that. Optimism is critical. If a person is realistically optimistic that they can get through the situation, almost invariably they will. A discouragement is what changes the potential to survive to the probability that you won't. Their progress was painfully slow, and with little food to be found, they were getting weaker all the time. Twice they decided against letting Elmo and Randy go on ahead, but after a week, they were tantalizingly close to the cabin. This is Keg Point. From here, it's six miles to Rose Inlet, just beyond that small island. At this point, Elmo and Randy decided to sprint ahead to the cabin and get help, leaving the two girls on the beach. They said they would be back within three hours. Be careful. It was such a relief because we finally were at that point where is help is actually going to come. We're going to be warm. We're going to be dry by noon. And uh, it was just wonderful to think about. In this boat, it'll take me about an hour to get to the hut. But for Randy and Elmo, it was a whole day slogging against the wind and the waves paddling all the way. They would also be feeling the effects of 10 days with hardly any food, not to mention the draining effect of the cold and the damp. And remember, they're